Okay guys and gals, you know we've done a lot of videos here on the channel over the last few years and uh, I thought long and hard about what we need to talk about and what we haven't talked about and that's hooks. In particular, circle hooks. That's what you surf fishermen have to use on the beach and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the size hooks, the type of hooks, different models and where you can get them at a good price. So let's get started. Here's a pile of Eagle Claw L197 hooks. You know, the biggest difference in circle hooks are some are going to be made with stainless, some are not. You don't want the stainless ones, especially if you're fishing from a boat. And you can read up on that at uh, myfwc.com and some of the rules above the uh, 28th parallel and below. But without getting too techy on you. The reason you want to use a non-stainless hook is, is it's going to help you and most of all help the fish in the event that that line breaks off, you want it to dissolve in that fish's gut or mouth after uh, seven days or 10 days, however long it takes. So uh, we're going to talk about a couple different models too because ever since our good friend COVID came along, we've had a big shortage with circle hooks. Here's a typical hook, you know, some people call it a standard hook. That's a J hook. And uh, a thinner version of this would be called uh, an Aberdeen. And uh, a thicker version might be called an O'Shaughnessy. But this is definitely not the hook that you want to use when you're surf fishing. You don't want to gut hook any of these fish, uh, especially if you got to throw it back. If it's a, it's a small, short pump, uh, you don't want that, so let's uh, let's use the best hook possible so we can, you know, preserve these fish and make sure they uh, they go back to the ocean and live. You know, this is my go-to hook right here. This is made by Eagle Claw, and it's called an L197. The finish on this hook is called Sea Guard, and it is most likely some type of a nickel finish, maybe an alloy with some zinc thrown in too. And uh, you're not going to have problems with this hook rusting up on you while you have it stored in your garage as long as you rinsed your surf rods and all of your line and your hooks before you put them away. That's important. Now I always use a, a two-off hook but let's say you're not targeting really big fish. Let's say you just want to target smaller fish like whiting. Well the one-off hooks will work too. So if that's all you can find is a one-off hook, uh, don't sweat it because that's going to work for you. That'll still pull in a pompano too, but that two-off hook is going to have a, a little more strength to it. And uh, God forbid we start pulling in that three, four pound pompano and that hook bends out on us. So anyways, uh, this is my go-to hook. And uh, as you can see, these guys have been around for a few days. Now, uh, the problem with this hook is, is it is in high demand. You know, they they just can't keep up. But we're going to give you some great tips later on in this video on where you can get the hooks for the uh, best bang for your book. But if you can't find this hook, uh, go ahead and look for this Mustad. Now, uh, this is a this is a three nine nine four zero NP. Same thing, two odd hook. You could use a one odd. Uh, this is a straight nickel finish. They call it a black nickel, and it's going to work fine for you. And it's way easier to find right now. Maybe, you know, maybe uh, a few years from now, right now at the time of this video, it's uh, January of 2023. And there are a few hooks popping up here and there, but this particular hook is a little easier to find. I happen to be well stocked up on the Eagle Claw hooks, but you know sometimes you just need to get your hooks ordered for the year uh, you know we all know what it's like to get sharked off and we can definitely go through uh, you know a hundred hooks or more in a season when you're surf fishing so uh, this is a good alternative for you I also wanted to talk about the difference between an inline or otherwise known as a non offset and an offset hook um, you guys are surfing uh, fishing from the beach so there's no rules against you using an offset hook. And if you look at this picture, if the hook was facing you, 
you can see the offset is uh, it's got a little twist to it, and this is going to make for way better hookup rates. And, um, you know, while we're talking about it, when you're out there fishing on the surf with a circle hook, there is no need to set the hook. If anything, uh, you may be doing more damage. If you set the hook real hard with a, a circle hook, they're designed to hook the lip. And if you nail them real hard with setting the hook, it could elongate the hole the hook is in, and uh, now, you know, you're just about ready to drag in that big pompano and the wave catches it in that last 10 feet. And it's a lot easier for that hook to pop out. So uh, if you're in a boat, uh, read your rules and regs and stick with the inline. Uh, same thing with tournament fishing. But all us surf fishermen are going to want uh, an offset hook. So enough said about that. Uh, what I also want to talk about, too, is... You know, if you're looking for those Eagle Claw hooks on Amazon, well, I'll tell you, you're going to find out real quickly that it's confusing as heck. You know, the descriptions are wrong. Now, look at this. This particular uh, uh, ad here on Amazon is actually from the Eagle Claw store. You would think that their description would be the most accurate out of everyone, but it's not even close. You know, one place it says it's a one-on. Then down below, it says it's a two-odd. It says country of origin, China. Well, I don't think that's true. All the hooks are made in Denver, Colorado, unless, uh, you know, they're not telling us something here. And uh, look at these other descriptions above. I don't even know what they mean. It looks like they're describing a, a reel or something. So I don't know. Um, I have not had good luck. I've had way better luck getting these hooks through uh, other avenues versus going on Amazon. Now, that's not necessarily true if you're looking for uh, those hooks uh, on websites. They're uh, better descriptions. Now, in all of my links, I show a direct for tackledirect.com. And, um, you know, you can get the hooks there, but we're going to go from highest price to lowest price. And, uh, yep, you can get them at Tackle Direct, but if you do all the math with shipping and everything, you know, you're looking at somewhere around 45 cents a hook. They're obviously going to be less if you order more packs, you know, so you may want to co-op with this to lower your price. But let's, uh, let's look at a few other alternatives, too. Now, if you search for that mustad hook we talked about, well, the descriptions are good. And uh, you're going to find what you want, one aught, two aught. And, um, you know, the prices aren't that great. They're uh, 43 cents a hook, but at least you, you've got them available to you. You know, maybe you don't have any stores nearby. You can go get the circle hooks. And I don't think I mentioned it in this video, but Walmart is a, definitely a place you want to check too, even though they seem to be uh, uh, harder to find. We'll show you some other options you got too, but Amazon for the Mustad is going to be a little easier for you. I would trust those descriptions. Here's another tip too. Took me a while to find this, but... Uh, after doing a little research and some phone calls, in Denver, Colorado, right next to the plant is what they call their country store. And you would hope that because the hooks are made there, that availability is going to be good. And I've called them a few times, and they usually do have 100 packs. Now, are they dirt cheap? No, they're $23.99. I'm not sure what they're going to charge you for shipping, but uh, if you were to use uh, USPS flat rate boxes, uh, you're going to see it's going to be about $0.36 cents a hook. You know, that's better than some of the rates we saw on Amazon, but, you know, use this number and give them a shout. There again, if you buy more than one 100 pack, you're probably going to be better off, but... Uh, you know, let's not cross the line and hoard these either. That's half of the problem since COVID has come about. You know, some people have gotten a little overzealous with ordering anything in regards to efficient tackle. Let's leave some for the next guy who wants some. So there's another alternative for you. You can call the country store right at Eagle Claw and uh, talk to the uh, reps there and get these ordered up. And at 36 cents a hook, a little cheaper than what we saw at Amazon. There's some good deals out there. You know, this one probably won't be around by the time uh, a few months pass. But here's one for, uh, 
you know, about 30 cents a, a hook, uh, free shipping of, on this 30 pack of the L197. So, you know, scour your, uh, your eBay ads and see what you've got there too. Uh, the best deal that I think I've found out there for these uh, Eagle Claw hooks in particular has been Bass Pro if you've got one close enough to go there. Uh, you know, if you order it online, well, it's not so great a price. Uh, by the time you add your, your tax and your shipping, you're at about $0.42 cents a hook. But if you're lucky enough to have a Bass Pro shop in Florida and you want to go there and pick them up, well, you're going to get the best bang for your buck at $0.28 cents a hook. Like I said, check Walmart too. And uh, if you did decide to go out and get a commercial fishing license, there's a good chance that your fish house is going to sell 100 packs that might even beat this price. So, um, But there you go. I mean, uh, I hope I've taught you a little bit about these uh, circle hooks. One thing I would like to mention as well is don't confuse a kale hook with a circle hook. Uh, usually these kale hooks are a, a real wide gap hook. Now I was fishing with kale when I first started out. I didn't know any better. I thought they were a circle hook but they're really not and uh, you know Mr. Game Warden uh, might ding you for an expensive ticket if you're in a boat and you're using you're using kale hooks, especially if you're using stainless. You don't want to use stainless either. So, uh, you know, when you're buying your hooks, make sure they're a circle hook. Make sure they're a carbon steel. You know, they're not a stainless uh, nickel finish, or in the case of the Eagle Claw, a Seaguard uh, finish. And uh, make sure they're an offset if you're not in that boat and you're on shore. You're going to get better hookup rates on that. And, uh, you know, that's going to do it. Um, I hope that you've learned a little bit about hooks and the type you need for surf fishing, and I wish you luck finding some. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our Pompano Brownie channel. And that'll do it for this video.